Oh, Kelly, can you even believe it's November? I can't. It's there's just so much snow. Oh, wait, no, it's, it's Florida. <laughs> so there's, there's no snow. But uh, yeah, we have a great episode of uh, boating broadcast going on today, Lisa. Really excited about it. All uh, right. Tell me what's what's going on today. Well, I hope you have your drinking mug handy because we're going to be talking brewing beer on a boat. Oh, also, cool. um, the latest and greatest Sea Keeper, the Sea Keeper One, the most yeah. small and nimble that you can possibly think and getting on those smaller boats. We're going to be talking nice. that. Uh, Boston Whaler has a 280 Vantage, which is apparently a huge hit. We're going to be talking all things Boston Whaler 280 Vantage. Excellent. Have you heard of Super Yacht Captain? <gasps> you know, I have. Well, he is our guest today, and he's going to be talking about the life of being a captain on a super yacht. So you got to check that out. And uh, of course, a social update with some extreme docking. Uh, with uh, our social update from Landon, so you gotta stay tuned. Welcome to From the Helm Boating Broadcast with Marine Max, bringing you the latest news and notes in the world of boats. Welcome, yeah. everybody, to From the Helm Boating Broadcast. We are your hosts. I am Lisa, and he is Kelly. Hello, Say hello, hello to the folks. How is everybody at home? Hoping everybody is staying warm up north and uh, enjoying <laughs> some cooler weather down south, finally. Excited. Yes. All right. Interact with us in the comments comment section. We'd love to hear from you. Mm -hmm. And uh, please share this with your friends, family, uh, relatives. They'd love to know what's going on in the boating world as well. For our audio-only listeners, thank you so much for joining us. Yep. If you would like to see what you are hearing, please visit YouTube or Facebook and look for Marine Max. We have all of our boating broadcasts there for your viewing pleasure. Yeah. So first up, let's get into some headlines sure. here. Uh, I saw this and I I thought my two worlds have collided. Let's talk <laughs> beer and boats. Yeah, the best of both worlds. And um, yeah, pretty cool story here talking about, uh, we'll, we'll say this, the headline here real quick. Beer can be hard to find when cruising remote atolls in the Pacific. So this pair of sailors took up home brewing from their sailboat. Yes. Wow. So they're brewing beer aboard a sailboat in the middle of paradise. Basically, yes. So uh, the, this couple set out towards the Pacific, and they knew that booze was going to be costly in many areas if they could find it at all. Mm -hmm. So they this is one of the things that they provisioned. They filled up their boat with boxed wine, cases of beer, and they got some rum in Panama. Uh, and at one of nice. their ports, they met a gentleman from New Zealand. So um, they were in the French Polynesia, and yep. this, this gentleman invited them to try his homemade beer. And they thought that that was very odd. Uh, but yeah. then, uh, they were, they ran out of their rum and they were out down to nothing. And they're like, you know what, let's just give this a try. Did a little research. And, uh, there were some mishaps along the way, which the story goes into some in great detail. It's a very good story. Um, but they ended up brewing their own beer on their boat, on their boat. Well, and you think, I mean, when you're in paradise, uh, it is, you, you think of a, a lot of great Corona and, and a lot of different oh, beers yeah. that are perfect for the beach, but it's not one that you think of that you're going to be making while you're out on the water, uh, you know, sailing around. I would think maybe some sort of just fermented fruit drink or something like that, that they would make, <laughs> uh, that they, they get some, some fruit from the islands or something like that. But that's very interesting. And, uh, and it shows that it's possible if you're, yeah. you're you know, if you're, if you're sailing the world or, or cruising around the world and i have to say that those some of those uh, videos are some of the most interesting on if you get caught in the world of youtube videos it's just to watch these people that they spend their lives on the water and, and yeah. they just cruise around and one day they're in fiji the next month they're you know new zealand or somewhere else it's so cool to hear those cool stories yeah definitely a great article by cruising world it goes into quite quite a lot of detail. I think there's even a recipe in there if you want to attempt to to make your own beer at home. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have not tried it. I, have, I know nothing about it. So, you know, if you try it and it, it's awful, my apologies. It's, yeah, not our fault. <laughs> I just have to read this. This sentence is one of the best I've read in a long time. A year later, we were still in French Polynesia and had run out of Panamanian booze. <laughs> That sounds like a good problem to have, I guess. Uh, that was the catalyst that got them thinking they should brew their own beer. And yeah. here, here they are later uh, enjoying their own brewed beer, which has got to feel great, right? Like, I made this. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And, yeah. and you're doing it in some cool places. So be sure to check out that uh, that great story on Cruising World. Uh, really cool. Really cool yep. story there. That is a very neat story. All right. So going into some more technology, uh, we are going to take a look at the Seakeeper 1. 
-hmm. So this is a cool article. It's actually video by boattest.com. Yep. Um, so Seakeeper One, it's the smallest model of the manufacturer's lineup. They're computer controlled gyroscopic stabilizers. Um, and this one can be installed in boats as small as 23 feet. And it just runs on 12 volts. So uh, it is a pretty cool product. Our buddy, Captain Steve, goes hey. through um, through the, the product uh, lineup. So he boattest.com overall is just great if you're looking for more information on, on anything. They do a great job diving yep. in there. Yeah, Captain Steve knows his stuff, that's for sure. Uh, and it's great, always great to talk to him. And and what better person to get the load on on all the the tech when it comes to boating than Captain Steve, who gets to just he 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 experiences it firsthand as always. Oh yeah, of course. So the Sea Keeper's proprietary design it centers on a steel flywheel that spins in a vacuum mm -hmm. to eliminate up to ninety percent of boat roll. So um, that, that's the the pitching back and forth that you sometimes feel if you're out at sea and it's a windy day. Yep. Um, so it just helps to eliminate that. So you're only pitching one way. So it, it just, it instead of going all over the place, you're, you know, you can only rock a little bit. It's it's not 100%, but it is, man, you can no, feel the difference. It, you have I mean, not had a chance to demo Seakeeper. Uh, I highly recommend. Here we go. He's demoing yeah. it right now. You well, switch it, it on. It's always fun how they, they show, um, <laughs> you know, at the boat shows and stuff, they'll have the guys like rocking the boat back and forth and, which is a great simulation. But if you ever actually get the opportunity to get out on the open water in, in some of these major swells or just in a really choppy day, and then when they flip it on, and it's just crazy to, to feel the difference of you're, you're going, you know, rocking and rolling, and then you just stop. Like within a second, you can see it right there. And it's cool with this new Seakeeper 1 too, that they actually have this like um, a little window so you can kind of see it in action. Uh, I always yeah. like to see my technology in action like that. And, Me too. Uh, Certainly a, a great way to do it with the Seakeeper one. And of wow. course, all touchscreen that you just saw it there. I mean, it's mm -hmm. uh, you can you can kind of control it from your your Raymarine. <laughs> I think they even have, look at he's he's like, I'm, I'm not worrying about this. It's choppy out there, but you can control it from Raymarine, uh, you know, or, or any of your electronics. Or I mm -hmm. think there's also the Seakeeper little uh, little area on your uh, at the dash there at the helm that you can turn it on, turn it off see what your percentages are and get all your stats. Yeah. Well, that's boattest.com. Very cool. Yes. Very cool stuff. And then last up in our headline section, Boston Wheeler 280 Vantage is a hit. And it this is. is a cool article from Boating Magazine that will get pulled up here. Yeah. Bear um, with me here. I'm trying to work the, the technologies. Um, but yeah, I mean, the 280, the Vantage line this year has been um, a hit in general, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. So uh, it's just um, no matter what, I mean, they just continue to press the envelope, push the envelope and, and get more people um, in into boating. And I think uh, the Vantage is certainly one of those boats that you want to. I mean, a lot of people, I would say, start with the Vantage, right? I mean, that's kind of a uh, generally uh, it could be entry level if you want it to be. I mean, it's obviously mm -hmm. a large, beautiful Boston Whaler, but uh, just a, a great boat to get out on the water and enjoy the day. An yeah. unthinkable do it all is the headline or the subheader yes. there reads. Yeah, the article goes into detail about um, boating family basics and how they haven't really changed much in the past, you know, however many millennia. Mm -hmm. People want to be safe on the water. They want power on the water. They want quality on the water. So a lot of the requirements are always the same. And Whaler has taken the challenge and and just always improved year after year and the 280 vantage is a, a remarkable vessel great dual console day boat well any boston whaler is a, a perfect boat <laughs> to get on the water and uh, and certainly the vantage is is versatile versatile the versatility of the vantage <laughs> is always there and um you know you just have so many options you, you're seeing here you know some of the cooking options uh, just the, the versatile seating here, the, the <laughs> versatility. I just want to, well, I keep thinking of like Derek Zoolander when he says versatility. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, you can flip all the, the seats around to be facing forward or aft and uh, just so many different things that you can do to to just enjoy the boating experience. Mm -hmm. Look at that, you, you know, a nice little swim ladder there that you can get up and out of the water mm -hmm. if you want to. Yes, I always liked the Boston Wheeler lineup because they always look very, I'm not going to say easy to clean, but easier to clean <laughs> yeah. than a lot of other boats. Like I grew up on a 17 foot 
Larson and mm -hmm. we had carpet. You know, that yeah. was a lot of, you know what I'm talking about? That, I can smell it already. <laughs> <laughs> but that was in Michigan, right? So sure. it, it, things dry out a little differently up there. Yeah. Um, but I just think, look at how like sharp all the lines are and mm -hmm. everything is, you just hose the whole thing off after day boating. Yeah. Oh yeah. Especially, uh, yeah. I mean, even the materials that all the, the seats are made out of and everything just sprayed mm -hmm. down and clean. And also just, I mean, you know, it doesn't get talked about that much, but how quickly the mercury outboards have converted just basically uh, pretty much all you see at this point are the white ones. I mean, you do see the black True. ones every once in a while, but everybody wants the white ones and they just look clean. Like look how nice, uh, uh, that those, those white, uh, outboards look with the, the rest of that boat. It just looks super clean. Um, and it's just kind of cool that you can also like tweak them if you want, you can get like mm -hmm. some custom paint jobs and stuff. It's, uh, it's always cool to see what people are it's doing. like rims for a way. car. Like, you trick yeah. out your mercury. Yeah. You can trick it out. You can get, I think you can even get wraps around the whole boat if you oh, want yeah. to. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I've, so. I've definitely seen uh, some cool, I, it's just, you know, you're going extra above and beyond. You you're are. you're customizing your Mercury's to to match the your boat. Yep. Well, and uh, so yeah, so that's the 280 Vantage. They have the new 240 out. Uh, there's just a lot of cool things going on from uh, from mm -hmm. Boston Whaler these days. Yeah, lots of great stuff from them. They were just at the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show. They were, as always, <laughs> and uh, always a, a ton of new stuff and uh, a ton of the latest uh, models and and just some tweaks for the yes. the model years every year. Uh, mm -hmm. So. Always great to see those guys and gals over at, at uh, Boston Whaler. Yes, absolutely. You know what else is at the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show? Super Yachts. I was and you know say. who you know who we're talking to today? Super Yacht Captain. Yes. Please welcome to the program Captain Tristan Mortlock of the multi-award winning Super Yacht AWOL, better known as Super Yacht Captain on his YouTube channel. Tristan, welcome to the program. Welcome. Well, guys, thank you very much for having me. Been looking forward to this. I actually watched uh, the one you did with Nick from Aquaholic. Yes, yes. Uh, and you commented, and and we were uh, we were very excited to see you commenting, and we were like, "Hey, we got to get him on one of these days." I mean, such interesting content for sure. And here we are. And, and here, here we, we are. are. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I I thought maybe let's start out with. Um, who you are and what you do. Just give people kind of a little bit of a background overview uh, of, you know, just to start with, and then we can get mm -hmm. into some questions. Wow, that's uh, okay. Very broad question. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> you, so, right. So I was born in the UK um, back in the mid 80s. And um, we left, I left the UK when I was eight, nine years old. And then we, the family moved to Spain to the south of Spain, to the Costa, a place called Costa del Sol. And at the age of 14, I think I was 14, my, can you guys still hear me? Yep. Yes. Yeah, sorry. My father actually bought a Sea Ray. He bought a Sea oh, Ray wow. 185 built in the early 90s. And then we did a we did our course. We started off right. We did uh, a RYA course, which is the Royal Yachting Association. I was fifteen, but they didn't issue the certificates until you're sixteen. We did the, the a two day course, and then we were just using the boat up and down the south, you know, the, the south of Spain. Mm -hmm. And then when I was sixteen, seventeen, um, I was useless in school. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I just. I could never, you know, I've always been um, a believer in you're, you're good at what you enjoy. If you follow mm -hmm. the things you enjoy, you naturally are good at it because you're, right. you're interested in it, you want to learn from it. And school just wasn't for me, you know, it wasn't for, mm -hmm. it's not for everybody, right? So I said, to my, I said to my parents, look, I'm not enjoying school, I'm not doing school, I want to take, you know, take the summer and go and find a job. So um, they said, okay, let's see how it goes in the summer. And then mm -hmm. my parents probably thought, you know, after <laughs> they realized that you know, the real world is to go back to school and it'll right. be fine. So my dad says, you know, why don't you go and speak to the guys at Marina Marbella? Now, Marina Marbella, the sea raid dealers in Spain. Okay. And so I go to see them and they say, um, yeah, yeah, we need guys for summer to help prep all the boats because they have mm -hmm. managed like six, seven hundred boats, prep all the boats, 
uh, for the summer, clean them, get them ready, put them in the water, and away and away we go. So I was like, okay, cool. So day one at work, I get to I get to the office, and uh, my boss's name is Mark Smith. I think he still works at Marine Marbella. Lovely, lovely guy. Got all the time in the world for him. And he says, right, you got to go with with this guy, and he's going to show you kind of like show you what to do. I'm like, okay, cool. So my first two three hours, I was literally cleaning sea rays and getting them ready. Right. For Clients. And about two, three, yeah, two, three hours afterwards, Mark comes up to me and he says, um, Tristan, your dad's got a boat with us, right? I was like, yeah, we've got um, the Sea Rig 185. And he says, do you have a license? And I was <laughs> like, um, yeah, I do. He's like, ah, oh, fantastic. We need people to move boats up and down the south of Spain. Oh. Bear in mind, I'm 16 years old. Wow. Right? So then I was like, okay, he goes, I need you to take this Sea Ray. It was brand new, out of the box, Sea um, <laughs> Ray 240 Bow Rider. Yep. And he said, I remember it perfectly. He said, you need to take it from Marbella, which is where our base was, to a place called Puerto de Banus. So Puerto Banus is kind of known as the Santa Fe of Spain. All right. So I was like, okay, it was a beautiful, calm, I think it was June or July day, flat calm. Perfect. And Take the boat over Port Manus, and then on my own. So obviously, get the music on, oh, up, yeah. get some sunshine, get into Port Manus, dock the boat, and that was my first day of working in in the industry. From there, it was pretty similar every day, and I realized yeah. this is awesome. This is yeah. what I want to do. And then, so my whole my parents' whole plan of me working for the summer, realizing what the the real world is like completely backfired right <laughs> so i was like nope this is what i want to do i love boating and the, the, they're paying me for it like yeah i, I would I, we were paying for our secret they were paying me to drive the sea race fantastic the passion and then then what happens over the years gained more experience started driving bigger boats and i ended up working for marina Marbella for five years absolutely loved it i saw it as my university because in the summertime right. I was, you know, operating all kinds of vessels, different types of drives, so stern drives, outboards, mm -hmm. drives, arnesons, you know, screw, single screw, twins, everything. So I've got lots and lots of hands-on experience driving boats. And in the winter time, there wasn't much boat moving. So I went to see the boss and I said, I want to learn about the engineering. So they ah. said, okay, why don't you go and work? For, I work for the, um, one of the engineers as his assistant. So in the winter time, I was an assistant engineer, and then in the summertime, I was then operating all the boats. And anyway, I spent five years in Marine Marbella, and then um, I got my first captain's position at the age of 21. Wow. And it was on the Lazara, it was on a Lazara 75 LSX, fantastic boat with the, with the quad Volvos. And um, that's where it started. And I've been with the same owner. That was 2007. And then he bought AWOL, which is a San Lorenzo 122, mm -hmm. uh, end of 2016. And, you know, what's it now? 15, 16, like 18 years later. Wow. Still, they, I'm still stuck. You know, <laughs> I'm stuck. I'm yeah, still, right. Well, I think <laughs> that's one thing that. One thing that people can certainly take away from that is if you have a passion and you just work towards that that passion, uh, the the on the job training in many ways for many different pr professions can be just so important, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to boating and just being there in the world of boating, talking to the right people, being on the boats themselves, learning how they work. Um, I mean, you're you basically had that opportunity and you just you ran with it. And yeah. I think that uh you know, what, what would you say for others that might be, you know, you're sick, uh, somebody like you at 16 years old, you know, they're, they're, they're looking, they want to be in boating. What would you say to them to kind of, you know, follow their passion? I think the, the important thing I know is quite a cliche is don't chase the money. Mm -hmm. The money will come. Use your, use the time you have as a youngster in your teens and your early twenties, just to learn and to gain experience. And remember that big talkers don't learn. The quiet yeah. people are the ones that learn. So listen mm -hmm. to your mentor. You know, be the first one to arrive at work. Be the last one to leave. But you want right. to do that anyway. If you're doing what you enjoy, that's 
that's the way it's going to be and then yeah. kelly you, you hit the nail on the head it's about the people you know yeah. it's always about the people you work if you're working you know it's like in in school i don't know about you guys but if i didn't get on with a teacher well, I never did well in school anyway, but I did get in the <laughs> If I didn't, if I didn't well with the teacher, I do get terrible grades. If I can't like the teacher and I enjoy, you know, learning from them, I yeah. get right. And it's the same thing in in business or in your career. You have got to surround yourself with the right people. And you know, talking about people, people always ask me, you know, when are you going on a bigger boat? When are you going on a bigger boat? I was like, it's not about the size of the boat. You know, I've got no. the perfect boss. I'm staying with him. If he wants to go bigger, great. If he wants to stay with AWOL, that is that is great. You know, sure. follow the people and just just use your time. You've got so much time to make the money to learn, yeah. and if you love it, pursue it. You know, right? Yeah. And I remember I actually I worked it out when I because I started when I was 16, and the difference of the routes that I took rather than your conventional route. So the conventional route, I'd say, you know, within the super yacht industry is, you know, your first deck hands, you know, mm -hmm. industry, they're known as shammy technicians. <laughs> don't really much, you know, they don't get much hands-on experience. And then you kind of move up to like lead deck hand and bosun, and you might get a bit of tender experience and driving experience. The difference I had is I was, you know, during six months a year, I was operating anywhere between five and 10 boats a day. Yep. Right. Just moving around, in and out the shipyard, just getting hands-on experience. So, you know, that's why within, so what I worked out, I was like, okay, with this experience, with the license I need to get and the same time I need to get, I, can, I reckon in the next five years, I'll get my first captain's position. So during the winter when I was working the engineer, I said, I'm gonna be a captain by the time I'm 21. And he just laughed at me. And people will laugh at you and they will doubt you and they will put you down. Yep. But if you are persistent and you keep pushing yourself to the limit and you just don't give up, you know, I'm yeah. in the pudding. You know, at 21, I was 21, I was 21 on seven months and I've got my first captain's contract. So, how did that feel? It was hard. Um, Honestly, it felt great, but it was probably more scary and nerve-wracking. <laughs> the truth is, now I realized, you know, I don't have a clue what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, geez, this is, this is the next level. Because working at Marino Bay, they were in charge, like all the boats, mm, they yes. all the insurances, the certificates, you know, management of all the boats. And I always had them as a backup. And then I became a captain. I didn't have any backup. I was a person having organized everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but luckily the boss was a Marina Bay client and they still kind of helped me out for the first year or two. So I was quite lucky with that as well. Wow. So I mean, just to set a goal and say, hey, by 21, I want to do this at, to accomplish it. I, I it, It's no surprise that it was a slightly terrifying because any good goal should scare you a little bit, right? It should. That's but that's the whole point. You gotta. It, it should. If it if it doesn't, then it's not really it's not really a goal. Yeah. And the most important thing that I've learned, even when I started the YouTube channel, is you're going to have so there's going to be more naysayers than people. You know. Support. Oh yeah. That's yeah. for sure. And you just got to look past and don't believe it. Don't right. believe it because people think if they can't do it, nobody else can do it. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. so like, this kid there, he's delusional. No, just, just <laughs> do it. Nobody's going to give it to you. You've got to go and take it. You've got to work for it. It's not going to happen. Yeah. It's, not, it's not easy. Just go out. This is what I'm going to do. Have your goal. And then just, that's it. Push Having that it. goal and looking at it every day leading up to it and saying, what do I, what did I do today? Or what do I need to do tomorrow in order to achieve that goal that's, yeah. that's mm -hmm. sitting out there? Exactly. As like I said, you know, it's, it's all about taking on information, knowledge, listening, and you know just keep your head down and just and just just push forward and then you know you can do it trust me if i if, if i can do it i still can't I, you know i still laugh i still god somebody pays me to drive his 122 <laughs> foot super yacht around in the train <laughs> so it's delusional you know what's going right. on right sometimes I'm sure there's you, a, yourself, you know just there's so, certainly a lot of people out there i'm sure that that ask themselves or they see the videos and they're saying, you know, what does it take to, to do that? I mean, obviously, you know, uh, with, with YouTube and, and these social media areas, it makes it look so glitzy and glamorous every day to do these jobs. 
Um, but it's not so easy, obviously. I mean, if it was so easy, anybody could do it. But you know, what goes into a job like that, a, a super yacht captain? And, and uh, tell for the people that are sitting on the outside, um, you know, what goes into it on a daily basis? Well, ultimately, just to break it down, any captain on any vessel, regardless mm -hmm. whether it's a yacht or a tanker, has ultimately three responsibilities, okay? Captain's responsibility is to ensure the safety of the vessel, to ensure the safety of life on board, and to ensure the safety in, in the, of the environment. That's right. the three basic. From there, there's all subdivisions. Now, the difficulty, well, the differences come in whether or not the vessel is going to be a private yacht or a commercial yacht. In our case, we're commercial. So then we have a responsibility to follow regulations under a classification society. In our case, it's mm -hmm. Rena. And they, what, what they do, they basically set the safety standards of what you need to carry on board in right. regard to you know, equipment, et cetera, et cetera. And then we have flag states. In our case, we're Malta, and then we get um, Malta surveys every year as well. Mm -hmm. On top of that, you having to manage crew. So we, ran, we manage a crew. Now, the difficult thing really is what people don't realize. They see that, like you say, all the glitz and the glam. The reality of it is, is that you are living and working together 24 mm -hmm. hours a day, seven days a week in relative, people say relatively small space and you all have to get on and you're on back-to-back -back charters. Right. And, you know, that's difficult. And we're all human. Everybody has their, you know, their, we're, you know, we all have our good sides and our bad sides. Mm -hmm. We all have bad habits. We all have good habits. It's the nature of the beast and it's learning to manage that while also being sensitive to that particular person right so one of the captains the biggest captain's job is being really you are almost a like a counselor like a, almost like a therapist to keep, <laughs> keep everything lying make sure everybody yeah it's on well and then on top of that we're obviously managing you know charters so we've got to manage with charter clients and the difficulty that comes with that is subject to where the client is from is their, their cultures. So we've got, mm. so, so we've got a, you know, an American culture. It's, it's, you know, it's pretty similar to the UK, but say if we have like Russians or, you know, people from Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. we've got to adapt, we've got to adapt, you know, really, you know, really quickly. And then there's things like, you know, we've got to then things like provisioning, you got, you know, you've got to feed people and we've got like, <laughs> we're on all the islands. You've got to, all this kind of planning comes into play. Yep. You know, fueling and like all insurances, ship certificates. So it's a continuous process. It just never ends, especially for a charter yacht. I think for a private yacht, there's there's less work for for a captain. I think with the privacy, it's you don't get the charters. So then the gratuities are slightly different. So there's a lot more that goes into it. But I could talk to you about captaincy for the next two hours, and then I'm sure. <laughs> you're, you're click off. Well, I, I like how you mentioned too, it's like, you know, provisioning, you have to feed them. It's like, you're making it sound like they're just eating some fast food every once in a while, but it's like they're eating well, you know, yeah. I mean, um, and, and certainly in terms of the cultures, working yeah. with different people, different languages, I mean, uh, there's just so many things that you have to kind of just react on the fly and, and, and change your thought process no matter where you are in the yeah. world. And no two charters are ever the same, ever. Of course not. Yeah. And by the way, I'm just going to bring up too, while we talk to Super Yacht Captain here, I'm going to bring up his YouTube channel and there's a, a couple videos I, I chose myself here, uh, Lisa, that uh, I thought would be good for viewers and some of his most popular. One is docking in Portofino. And uh, for those of you out there who want to see his uh, videos, uh, Super Yacht Captain, check it out on YouTube. Just type mm -hmm. in Super Yacht Captain and you'll uh, you'll get his YouTube channel. And uh, and let me bring it up here real quick. And Talk amongst yourselves when I when I pop this in here real quick. I know. I have to say I have been following your adventures on Instagram. Uh, when you commented on our interview with, with Nick well, quite a long time ago, uh, I, I started following you. I was like, who is this guy? Maybe we should interview him. So I've really enjoyed watching your adventures. And obviously, Instagram is all the pretty shots. It's all the fun things that we do. <laughs> so I, I highly recommend following him on Instagram as well. Oh, thank yeah. You. yeah, thank you very much. We try and do little stories about what uh, what we're doing on board. So, uh, well, know, and it shows. Fun. I mean, uh, it shows the lifestyle too of of you know all these people that are involved. It's not. I mean, like like you said, there's there's so much crew that goes into a boat like this, and and so many people involved. Not only that work on the boat, but then if you're provisioning in different areas around the world, you need mm -hmm. to be yeah. in contact with those people. Obviously, the owner of the boat. 
Um, so there's just so many different things that go into it. And in being the super yacht captain, I'm sure that a lot of that falls on your plate and, and responsibility to make sure that everything is running smoothly for your guests. Well, absolutely. Is, yeah. And then we've also got the shore management team because we run, I think, with ISM, which is International Safety Management. So again, we have to follow, you know, protocol. We have to follow checklists continuously and always upload them to to the system. If we're not uploading stuff. We're getting emails saying you haven't done this, you haven't done that. <laughs> okay, we've got to run the boat, do the charters, and we've got to do all this. It's just, it's just the work. It's just continuous. Sure. Yeah. So um, how how was your season this year overall? I um, it was considering the circumstances. We had a fantastic season. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to. What to my favorite cruising ground, which is Croatia. I just love, yeah, cruising. I think it's the best cruising ground in the Mediterranean. There's just so many islands, it's beautiful. You can go to anchorages and be the only boat there, you know, for yeah. two oh. days. And in Croatia, you can drop your anchors and tie to the rocks, so you can go because it, it drops down very deep, very quick. So, you okay. Can you can be like 10, so was that 30 feet off the off the shore yep. on a 122 foot yacht and then tie to some rocks and spend a day all day, get the water, water toys out. But with, with this season, you know, we did about 30% of charters we've done the last, in comparison to last year. So it's quite a big hit. We lost 70% of our, of our charters. But on the plus side, for the owner, he used the boat a lot more than he normally would. Oh, excellent. That that's great. It was very short. Our season's normally six, seven months. And then this year we did three months, exactly three months, actually. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's pretty. Well, this, is a, this has been a very bizarre season in general. I mean, uh, in terms of boats in general, we've, we've talked about it, Lisa. The, the boat sales have skyrocketed because one thing that people you know, want to do is get out on the water more. Um, yeah. But obviously, I think, too, um, after this year, you've probably learned a lot of things in regards to the, the, this new way and, uh, and probably adapted in your, your, your strategies when it comes to uh, business to make sure that everything is, is the way that people would like it, you know, with, with social distancing and making yeah. sure things are clean and all that other stuff that goes into it now. Um, I'm sure people will definitely open up more, um, you know, to the, uh, the possibility of cruising around the world and going to Croatia and, and yeah. You know? Yeah, I think so. I think you have to because, I mean, for us, normally a, a lot of charts we do in the south of France would be like the Monaco Formula One Grand Prix, yep. which we didn't oh, yeah. cancel. And then we were supposed to do what we have every second year, they do the classic Grand Prix mm -hmm. and then the Cannes Film Festival. So those are three events we normally do every year. You know, the whole thing kind of cancelled. So the, the market for us, that, that, that those events happen in May. The main market just completely disappeared, you know, this year. Um, but you know, for us, you know, with the guests we had, especially in Croatia, like I said, you, you they're continuously on the boat. We're in all these different bays. There's for sure the best place to be social distancing is on board the boat. I mean, let's let's face it. Yeah. And I, you know, the first this year, it's been the first few months. Everybody's a bit scared, a bit nervous, not too sure. Mm -hmm. I think now people, uh, I want to say relax about it, but kind of understand it better. And, sure, you know, exactly. We have in place that so we make sure all our guests get tested 48 hours before. And, you know, this summer we don't have any issues at all with, um, you know, with the old uh, virus that keeps. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's anyway. good to hear. You're kind of on yeah. your own little private island there. So anybody you bring into your space, as long as you make sure they're good, your whole crew is good. Well, that's it, isn't it? And the most important thing is, oh, I guess, had a, had a good time, you know? So, sure. Yes, of course. And you, you mentioned know. Monaco, too. I think I remember seeing, and that was one of your most popular videos, too, was the Monaco, um, which I can probably pop up here, too, while we kind of talk about it. But um, yeah. so you said Croatia is your most, uh, your, your favorite location. Obviously, I think that that's an, uh, been an up and coming. More people have been going to Croatia. Uh, uh, what are some of your other, your favorite places around the world that you've been to that? You, you know, like, like, you know, I think the, like the Monaco Grand Prix is something spectacular. There's oh, no yeah. Formula One event on the Formula One calendar. I mean, it's just it, it's not just about the race. It's a whole atmosphere. You know, in the in the evenings, all the boats just light up and have these you know big parties, and it's the, the it, it's, it's hard to explain. I've never been there, but it's just the energy that is absolutely um, you know spectacular. Another yep. great, you know, another popular cruising. Uh, destination, well, destination, which a lot of boats go to, is obviously Saint Tropez. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I get it. 
Um, but, you know, some uh, boats go there all the time and it gets a bit samey and it's... Uh, yeah, it's you're telling that to a, a few Americans here that uh, we, we would just love the chance to get over there to any of those locations, right? Lisa? Yeah, yeah. The Monaco Grand Prix, I definitely recommend. That's a lot of fun. And then we did, and then obviously beautiful is, is Corsica, which is, you know, yes. the, the south of France. Some beautiful anchorage in there. There's a fantastic natural harbor on the southern tip of Corsica called Bonifacio. Mm -hmm. So we have years, if you've never heard of just Google Bonifacio, it is, you, you, you cruise in, you've got these huge high cliffs either side of you. And it's like this whole natural harbor. You go, you go deep in, and then there's a port there with fantastic restaurants. And you walk up to the very top of the town, and you've got views over Sardinia, oh. which is just south of um, Corsica. So Sardinia is a Italian island, and Corsica yep. is a French island. So it's uh, it's pretty cool as well. Do you ever make it over to the states? Have you ever done any yachting in the in the state side? So where we, no, I can't say I have. The only thing I can say is when we built um, Lizzie, which is the Lazara 75, because we bought mm -hmm. it brand new. So I went to Tampa, I was in Tampa for, for six weeks just to oh. you know, kind of finish off the last six weeks of the build. Sure. And then I, we didn't, we, we did, a, I think we did a sea trial and then I had to fly back to Europe and then the boat was taken to uh, Fort Lauderdale on there from their ship to, to Europe on the dock wise, I think. Mm -hmm. So no, okay. not, not much. Love to go down there. Uh, I've been invited a few times. I was hoping to come down for the, you know, for flips. Um, yes. Coming up, but you know, it's because of the current situation, it's been impossible for me. I have certain responsibilities, and uh, unfortunately, yeah. so hopefully, fingers crossed, next year get out on some boats and have some fun on the water. Yeah, oh, excellent. Sure. So Kelly and I also go to, or you usually go to the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show, but we're not going this year either. So. And we're right here. Well, so. the beauty is, though, yeah. we are going to be promoting everything that's taking place at the Fort Lauderdale that's International true. Boat Show. Luckily, we know people in the boating world. So um, <laughs> no matter what brands, uh, we're certainly going to be bringing you the best and, and brightest in terms of all the latest mm -hmm. models from the manufacturers. Um, I mean, there's just so much to, to see uh, anytime at a boat show. Um, and and uh, luckily, we have this beautiful thing called the Internet where we're providing you, including what Super Yacht Captain does every day uh, or every month, every opportunity he gets to go back and edit after he's been on the water um, and put up <laughs> another video. Uh, but of course, be sure to check out uh, Super Yacht Captain's uh, YouTube channel, his Instagram channel. I mean, there's just so much really good information, not only cool, mm -hmm. like getting into that type of uh, work or lifestyle, um, you know, mm -hmm. some of the things that he talks about. This is basically like a, an educational course in itself of, of how to become the next super yacht captain as well. <laughs> well, do you, do you know why I actually started the channel? Education? No. Do we like to know? I yes. I like to know, yeah. Are or not? What do you reckon? No, I'm joking. So <laughs> basically, um, I don't know what it's like in the States, but in the mainstream media, uh, especially in the UK, the super mm -hmm. yacht industry gets a very very bad rap interesting you know, they're just talking about how these you know billionaires are spending all this money on on the industry and on these big things unnecessarily mm -hmm. but so this is that's one of the reasons i started the channel is to show people and, and sorry and to say that people that the crew are treated like slaves and it's a horrible place to be and I'm like, this is simply not true yeah you, know, you want right. to show the reality of it writers? who are these people making the these um you know these accusations so I started to show people exactly what it's like to work on board a super yacht. The good, the bad, the ugly, the refueling, yep. you know, the, good day, the docking it in, in, in Portofino. Just to, to show, you know, actually, it's a really cool industry. I've been doing it for most of my life. Mm -hmm. and it's very rewarding. It's a fantastic career. And every time you see... Um, you know, on the mainstream media, you know, there's always some negative press about you know, the super yacht industry. And it's, yeah. it, for me, my personal experience, it simply isn't true. Sure. Well, you think of how many people uh, involved really through the channel, obviously. So mm -hmm. you think of, of the people involved in, in, in building the boat itself. There's got to be, I don't know, uh, hundreds of people uh, employed to build the boats. Uh, the people at each marina that you visit, um, you know, they're all uh, employees. Obviously, all the people that are involved in working on the boats themselves. I mean, one boat equals many different 
you know, uh, 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 careers and in, in, in jobs yeah. for sure. So oh, it's. Hey, uh, I, actually, I watched an interview with Peter Lurson from, you know, um, the Lurson Shipyard. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about, about motor yacht Eclipse, which is a 160 something meter super yacht. Yeah. And he's saying, he said during the build of that boat, right, it fed 30,000 families. <laughs> I believe it. And the mainstream media is about how many families that this boat is, 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 is feeding. Yep. They're talking about, oh, he spent 800 million euros on a boat. Well, no, he's feeding all these people. So let's look at some positive of, of the initiative. Sure. You're exactly right. And it seems like if you look at the, let's take, for example, Caspillar engines, all right? The right. marine diesel, they're a factory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, they rely on yachts to buy their engines to you know to put them right. in their boat, and then they pay their staff. And it's the same with all of the the parts on board. And like you're saying, in the marinas, there's marina assistants, there's you know commercial with divers. So in Santa Fe, we get divers. Mm -hmm. The provisioners. There's so many people involved within mm -hmm. the industry, and it's supporting thousands and thousands of people. So when I see all this negative stuff, I just think you're only looking at it through one side. You're not seeing both sides of it. Right. Well, Yachts on down. That's for sure. I mean, you know, we talked to all of our manufacturers out there and, and, you know, Boston Whaler even is a, is a great example of just the amount of people that are involved in putting these boats together, getting their, their, their engines from Mercury. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, there's just, uh, it's great to see, uh, especially all these team members that we know pretty well, just from working with them closely, just mm -hmm. how many really great people go into building these beautiful boats that we get to enjoy and you get to captain and Lisa gets yeah. to, have right on, on, right on. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, absolutely, hundred percent, absolutely. So, where are you, where are you headed next? Anywhere? Uh, any exciting locations? <sighs> no, unfortunately, our season is officially over. The boat ah. is out of the water. She is in Italy. She okay. is now in the shed. Uh, we're doing all our winter work list, winterizing everything. Yep. Um, we like putting her in the shed for the winter because it prolongs the life of the paint and they prevent mm -hmm. any weathering, any damage. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, then I think on mid-November we take up taking two weeks off. Can't really go anywhere because of restrictions. So, can't <laughs> really, you know, well, really you can really if you get an opportunity, you should head down to Florida where the weather is just getting perfect, right, Lisa? I mean, this is uh, yeah. this is when our season really just shines uh, down here, down in the south. I would absolutely love to, but I need to see what the restrictions are flying yeah. back and forth. I know that, that's the problem, you know. Yeah. yeah. No, definitely cool. So I did want to ask, I know AWOL is is technically absent without leave. It's it's how most people know AWOL. Is that what it stands for? No. So we've made it our own. Okay. I, I get it. a message constantly from, from people saying, oh, AWOL actually means absent without leave. Like, we do know this. It <laughs> means a way of life. There, there you go. When our guests come on board, they experience a way, a way of life on the water cruising around the Mediterranean Sea. And it's, it's what we promote. And we've also recently, last year, we started our AWOL, A Winter of Luxury, which is a ski chalet. Oh, did you miss You're me? Back. You're back. So, so yeah, so the internet, AWOL, right? AWOL Life. And then recently we started um, AWOL, A Winter of Luxury, which is, oh. our, which is our ski chalet. So last winter it was in Berbier. And this winter, it looks like it's going to be in a place called Courchevel. And so keep an eye out in the next couple of weeks. There might be a video coming out. Okay. Excellent. Very, right. very proud. It's actually been, it was set up by our chase boat captain, Harry. He, very brave of him. He put a business plan together and uh, he came to speak to me. He said, I've got this idea. Is it okay if I present it to the boss? Like, do whatever you want. Because sure. Harry's been with us for years. Right. So he goes to the boss and I've got this business plan. Can I sit down and talk to you? So they, they, they um, you know, they, they made an appointment. They had a meeting and Harry presented them with this business plan of setting up a ski chalet with a comp because Harry's a level four ski instructor, which is oh, a wow. top And he's been doing, he's been ski skiing from a professional point of view since he was 18, so 12 years. Wow. And then the boss loved the business plan. He'd get, let's go, let's do it. And we'll set it up and we'll call it a winter of luxury. And then last year was it was very successful first year, and then COVID hit. And the of whole course, thing got shut down, which I was yep. so gutted for Harry because he it was his dream to start his own chalet. Anyway, so they're coming back this year in Courchevel in a 
you know, the, the show they had last year was beautiful. This chalet is sensational. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and they're on Instagram, uh, Winter of Luxury. So if you guys want to okay. check it out, all right, content coming out, Very cool. and that's the winter program for for AWOL. That's amazing. That's yeah. so cool. Well, I know the the other thing that I found uh, when doing a little bit of research pre-interview is that you actually have a raffle out there right now, global raffle to win a luxury super yacht vacation aboard AWOL, correct? That is right. Wow. So, so let's talk about that and how I can rig that so I win. Let's talk yeah. about that a little bit. So, guys, so basically, when I, after about a year of running the YouTube channel, a lot of the comments from the viewers was, you know, it will be an amazing experience to have a holiday on board. A super yeah. yacht, you all know, it's only 0.01% that get to experience it. So we tried to work out how can we, you know, how can we set up something to, to allow one of our viewers to win a week on board? Mm-hmm. So, and so we did some, we did some uh, research and we found this, this um, company in the UK called Raffle. Uh, raffle.com and we approached them and said well this is all right that's what we want to do and then we approached the owner he agreed they agreed so then we set it up and basically what it is is um you can go you buy your tickets uh they start with 15 pounds which is depending on the exchange rate i think it's about around 20 us dollars you know do forgive me it's a yep. dollar or two right. off and basically what we're offering is an all-inclusive so it includes Flights from anywhere in the world return first class um, for up to six guests wow. and uh, uh, mm. four week on board motor your AWOL cruising around the Mediterranean, depending where we are. Could be Croatia, could be south of France, could be Italy. All your food expenses are covered, drink expenses, fuel. There is zero cost to the winner. And wow. we just wanted it to give that you know, 99.9% of the population, the opportunity to win. Mm-hmm. Let's face it, it is a dream vacation. Sure. Yeah. I want to enter the rapid. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Get from the boat. And so, yeah, I mean, so far we're, we're trying to, we've sold over 6,000 tickets so far. Wow. We're trying to get up to, we need to get up to 40,000 to make it, you know, um, viable. Mm-hmm. But we're going to start pushing a lot more now on, on marketing. The only, the only marketing that we've done has only been on the CVO account and social media. That is, mm-hmm. yep. we start being doing like paid marketing through Facebook and other social media. Right. Uh, but we think, you know, we feel it's going to, it's going to, it's, we're going to sell and, um, you know, hopefully it'll be a, a good lucky winner. That would be great. I want to give them the phone call. I said to the rapper company, I want to be the one that phones and oh, tell for them sure. that they won. And I'm going to have it, do it on, um, uh, on what do you call Video. it? On a um, loudspeaker. Oh, so yeah. Camera so that I get the reaction. Yep. As, oh. as well. so I think I think it'll be really cool. I mean, they've got all the toys and oh, just yeah. spend the week in the summer in the train on a super yacht. I mean, who wouldn't want to do that? Yeah, that's, that's the dream yeah. of, I think, uh, 99 99- Point nine percent of the people out there would, would love an opportunity to just sit on a, a, a beautiful super yacht yes. for some time in the, the middle of the Mediterranean and just enjoy. Yeah. So that was great. Yeah, I mean, just to be 100% transparent yeah. here, the raffle is done through a complete third party. Company. Right. I have no say at all in picking the numbers, nothing. I don't, the only contact I have with them is on email. They, they've got thousands of raffles on any one time uh-huh. um, but i have to say that a few of my family members have bought tickets as well because they want <laughs> they want it they want to get on board so sure. I'm, I'm kind of as much as i hate it, i kind of hope they don't win <laughs> yeah. it would look They're really probably. delicious right but, uh, sure well but no, it'll be a lot of fun and there'll be a lucky winner out there and it will be uh, i think an experience of a lifetime Oh, and so and how do they do so? Uh, they need to go to your YouTube channel to 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 sign up, or yeah, so basically, you just go to raffle.com. So it's R okay. raffle spelled R A double F A double L dot com, and then you'll see there'll be a search. Just type in Super Yacht Captain, and then sure. the thing will will then just 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 come up. Awesome. 
Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, well, we'll be sure to promote it and drop the link in uh, when we premiere this video so people can have a chance to get tickets uh, for that. I myself might be playing along well, because maybe, that would be excellent. Maybe if we won, Lisa, we could just do one of these boating broadcasts from the Mediterranean. Oh, we, oh, we absolutely would. Yeah. It will. I mean... <laughs> That would be great. Well, all right. Well, I know we could sit here and talk with yeah. you all day. You're a fabulous storyteller and I have so many more questions, but I know you are, you have an evening to get to. So we'll, we'll let you, uh, do you have anything else you would like to add? Any, sh any other, do we miss any social media channels or any, anything else going on in your world? No, I just think, um, yeah, like we said, got the YouTube channel and we try to produce content that, you know, I think people want to see, but no, just thank you guys so much for having me on. I, Honestly, really appreciate it. Hopefully, one year when I come to Flips, we'll get to meet in in person. I meet so many people like this. Yeah, you know, I know. Like interviews that we never get to. Well, normally meet them at the Monaco show, but this year there's no Monaco show. There's no Can show. But, right. Uh, sure. Let's hope next year we get to meet and um, you know maybe have a, a beer or two. That I'm I'm great. in. I'm on board. Yeah. <laughs> and no matter what, you can always check out Super Yacht Captain's videos on his YouTube channel at just. Type in Super Yacht Captain on YouTube or Google. They're kind of the same. So, um, you know, check that out. Uh, Instagram, is it the same? Super Yacht Captain? Same. Yep. Super Yacht Captain. Uh, yeah. Facebook, Super Yacht just, just Super Yacht Captain, everything, really. Yeah. yeah. And it's really worth neat. a follow because uh, not only do you see these beautiful locations, see this beautiful bo boat, a wall, but you also get to learn. Uh, and, and as you mm -hmm. said, you know, that's a big part of this whole thing. And, uh, you know, you don't see too much of that side of the business of, of just what goes into it. Uh, you see yeah. all the glitz and the glamour, but you can also learn along the way. So be sure to check it yeah, out. I Super to, I say, again, a big, big thank you to the owner of the boat for allowing it to happen. You know, because with that, I said it to you guys when we were talking earlier that 99.9% .9 of your owners will never allow this to happen. Sure. So very grateful to him. And so a big thanks to, to the boss man. And Shout yeah, out to the boss man. Yeah, legend, <laughs> absolute legend. Awesome. Excellent. Cool. All right, Tristan, thank you so much for joining us. Have an excellent Bye. evening. We might have to do this again sometime. If you have Certainly. any any anything cool you would ever like to promote, promote, like please feel free to reach out. We'd love to hear about your adventures. Sounds yep. good. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. All right. It. Thank you too. We'll see you All next right. time. All yep. right. And you can just uh, close your browser, and that is the end. All right. Cool. All right. Well, I could, I have like way more questions. I have like, what happens if he gets sick? Yeah. Yeah. You certainly. know, I mean, there's, there's or, so like, many needs a day off. So it's, we certainly uh, need to have a follow up conversation I with think him. So. Most likely a board, um, a wall. Uh, I think we have to, <laughs> after even if we, we win the contest, even if we don't win the raffle, I'm sure we could probably figure out something where we can get out there and, uh, you know, just, uh, anchored off Croatia and, uh, um, <sighs> we'll, we'll get more answers out of him. Uh, that so. I'm on board, L literally and literally. All right, yep. so let's roll into our social update. We have okay. a cool video. Um, I've been told there's some extreme docking, and uh, <laughs> what's that about, Landon? Get there's some extreme docking indeed. Uh, I, I have <laughs> actually seen docking. this video that I'm about to show you several times over the past couple years, and it blows yep. my mind every time. So, KB, maybe what you want to do is full screen that because it's vertical orientation. Okay. Um, this is not sped up. I'm going to just tell you that ahead of time. This is not sped up. Oh, hold on. Uh, <laughs> we'll get there. There's there's a lot open here. All right. Yeah. One second here. He's, he's um, still uh, that. Dreaming, Show dreaming that. About, uh, Show that. There you go. Wait. Nope. How do I make that full screen? There we go. Okay. All right. Got a lot of people involved here, so let's see. Um, let's check it out. <gasps> oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! So that's, that's pretty like much the whole video. Um, absolutely blows my mind every single time because this <gasps> this vessel, this police vessel, comes towards the dock full speed does a yep. maneuver and is able to do some extreme docking. So this is kind of like an air show, but a boat show in a way of just showing off the, the talents of the captain. Yeah, and you could see on the side there it said it said police. And as uh -huh. much as I've seen this video, I have not been able to dig any further information on what this is because 
from what I can tell, it looks like it's either a show or an actual contest, a, like an extreme docking yeah. contest. Um, but super cool. Yeah, I got to play it one more time for the oh viewers my gosh. out there. Well, and, at uh, first, that very first shot, I thought we were looking at sand. I thought it was. Yeah, me too. A, a, and then I, I, I realized it's a concrete wall that they're coming full speed toward. Mm -hmm. And that is. Um, yeah, that's that's, that's some skills. Well, that's uh, yeah, that's some certain skills, and uh, you probably need to uh, practice that quite a bit before actually attempting to uh, break on a dime like that. I don't know. Right, what right. Consider it breaking, but so uh, as always with a lot of the videos that I show on here, uh, don't try this at home with your own <laughs> vessel. Do not try extreme docking into your marina. These are professionals, uh, coast guard or police, uh, yeah. you know, vessels that are very experienced with this. So. Cool. Um, yeah, cool stuff. And if anybody's able to dig up information, I would love to hear it. I've I tried, you know, finding any kind of background into this, and I just was unable to. So I apologize for not doing my due reporting diligence on this <laughs> one. But it <laughs> still citing your sources, me. right? That's yeah. still cool. It's all it's all good. It was a jaw dropping video to watch. That's for sure. Uh, right. So if people are looking for more really cool boating videos, Landon, where should they go? Guys, we're all over social media. Anywhere there's a search bar, just search Marine Max and you'll find all of our content. Always cool things going on. All awesome. right. Um, any final words from you, Mr. Kelly Berry? Hey, shout out to Tristan, the super yacht captain. I mean, that was some really cool information. Uh, he's Everybody always says, you know, uh, it's got to be the dream job, which I'm sure it is for him. But at the same time, the amount of uh, hours he puts into that job, it's certainly... Uh, it's certainly work, that's for sure. Um, oh, yeah. But uh, uh, work that he's passionate about, and that's that's kind of what I think everybody needs to find is is work that they're passionate about, and then it it doesn't really feel like work then at that point. Very good point, Kelly. And we also suggest you give the Super Yacht Captain a follow on whatever your favorite social media platform is. He's got some very cool content. Yeah. I mean, Super Yachts, come on now. Yeah, come on. Um, tune in next week for more boating news. And reminder, you can see or hear more episodes of Boating Broadcasts in our sister podcast, Boating Tips Live, on Facebook, YouTube, everything that Landon mentioned, yep. and the Marine Max Lifestyles blog, available through the app or on marinemax.com. You can also find us on podcasts, newly added, iHeartRadio, Spotify, yes. Google, Apple, you know, you name it. We're working to be everywhere for you to make it easy to access boating news. We hope you enjoyed today's boating broadcast. As always, stay healthy and boat happy. We'll see you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode of From the Helm Boating Broadcast. To keep up with the latest news and notes in the world of boats, be sure to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and wherever podcasts can be heard. Until next time, we'll see you out on the water.